Hospitality was one of the worst hit sectors in the last couple of years, and while things are opening up, they're still doing it tough. I'm joined by Duncan Disorderly, columnist Duncan Gardner. So, what was the party like at the Hospitality and Zed's annual gala awards yeah. last week? So, so um, good morning. If, if, you're, if you're going to do a party, this is the one to go to. So, the Hospitality holds a party, and you get invited, so you go. Um, 600 people. Uh, this was at a hotel, um, the Grand Millennium, which hadn't held a function of this size in two and a half years. So it was a test for them as well. So 600 people, 600 meals, thousands of drinks, a dance floor, a band. They did it really well. Um, people were excited to be there their first time out, seeing each other in this industry for two years. So they've spoken, they've caught up, but they haven't caught up in person. Um, there was a genuine level of excitement that they could get out once again. And you think about it, these people are sociable people. They they run bars, um, motels, hotels, um, anything, anything to do with hospitality. So the excitement uh, in the room, um, they made it really clear that they were happy to be there and happy that COVID was almost over, but not quite. But it's mm -hmm. been really damaging for them. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been, it's been um, paralysing to a point for some of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a sense of celebration, but also I would think some commiseration for the sector as well. Correct, yeah. So it was um, their awards evening. Um, yeah. But in, in saying that, I think you're, you're being on the money. Uh, the commiseration was held privately at the tables. Um, I was asked to be relentlessly positive about the sector, but also give us your element of truth from how you see it and what we've told you. So you couldn't go past, if you mentioned government, uh, they would not boo, but they would sort of sneer. And Stuart Nash, who as tourism minister, hadn't bothered to um, turn up at the conference. He just sent a video of his message, which I think uh, for this industry, which has been so badly damaged after two years of being locked down, they survived by letting people into their bars and, and establishments and having close contact with people. So they were dead meat right from the start, but they, they, they believe that their government's approach extended far beyond its, its mandate and reach, and they've been hurt as a result. But 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 for different bars and different places that go under, in comes a new one, and um, the need is met. But they didn't want to dance on graves like that in this place because these are their friends and so forth. So they've done it hard, but what is positive is that they, they see a, a finish line now. They're having their own function. The, the mere fact you can have a function mm. of that size to them represents a massive progress. Mm -hmm. Now, the main reason that the sector has suffered over the last couple of years is because of COVID health protections. Uh, would they have wanted the government to have totally uh, not put any restrictions on the sector? I think they're realists and they accepted that it had to happen. I just don't think that they felt listened to. Um, I think they think that the Auckland lockdown, the last one, went too long. And while they're talking to their friends overseas who had moved on, we hadn't. But that's because I explained to them, well, COVID came a bit later for us and it's still here and they weren't really um how do i put this they, they they weren't overly sympathetic of the approach that the government had to do this because they think it went too far and the fact that the government didn't they felt the government was glib and um, didn't listen to anyone in the private sector they felt that their voice wasn't heard no matter what they said they, they weren't taken into account they felt it was too narrow cast that there were too many there were too few people running such a big show and they would have liked a more of a seat at the table when it came to their own solutions they wanted to make 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 compromises they have to they get that they're in the industry that COVID spreads but they weren't asked and when they said their view they don't feel like they were listened to mm -hmm. you got to go together in collaboration on these things especially after two years mm. Now, staffing's a huge issue in the sector. I mean, a lot of cafes and bars are actually running reduced hours just to cope with the lack of staff. Do you think that now the borders have opened, this will ease? <sighs> They're not so sure. They have Their traditional um, ports of call for overseas staff have dried up. So the, we've spoken about this in this column before in, 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 in this publication. Uh, people aren't rushing to the border to get to New Zealand. People aren't flying here like we thought they would because they've had options. And we've seen that in the past few months. They now have decided to train New Zealand staff, which, which may not be a bad thing. They may upskill New Zealanders. They've, they've realised that, OK, we've for so long we've got away with the foreign workers and they come with all sorts of um, pros and cons. Uh, one of them was probably a bit cheaper. Uh, New Zealanders uh, will be... Um, maybe more difficult to train, maybe more reluctant to work in the bars, so they're going to have to try and cross this bridge now. But they are focused on, they've come to the conclusion that, hey, without foreign workers coming to New Zealand, well, let's look at New Zealanders. Who's there? Who's available? What can we do for them? So um, there may be some, there may be, um, it may be a bit of a sort of upside of, of the whole shortage, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I read today, actually, that the out of all the small businesses, 
um, over the last few months. It's actually hospitality who've had the um, biggest wage increases and the biggest amount of sales, business mm. sales. So it does show that there's some hope in the sector. I, I, think, I think so. And then that's why they're upbeat, because they know that um, their numbers are coming back. Um, so if you look at the, the pay rises, that's because they've, they've had to, to get people. Uh, they've lost a lot of the cheap labour, so they've had to go and pay people. They've just had to pay people. Now, higher wages, is that, is that a good thing? Uh, or as a worker, it's probably a good thing, yeah. But how long can it be sustainable for? What does it mean for prices? All, everything's always passed on to a consumer. We've seen that with inflation. So let's just wait and see. It's, it's very much a resettling period for the for the industry, but it's a crucial industry. Um, they are the people that you see when you arrive in a country, they're the people you see when you leave a country, they're the cafes, the, the bars, the places that you visit. So they're almost ambassadors for New Zealand, so you want them in a good place and, and you want good quality providers too. Mm. And from your read of the room last week, um, what did they want the government to do? <sighs> to leave them alone. I mean, they want a hands-off industry. But they want to be able to do the things that they've always done. They don't want to be locked down. Um, one of the one of the um, things they said to me was that the reason they can't get staff is because there's this feeling from overseas staff that if they come back, they'll get locked down. And overseas staff don't want to be locked down in the country. And I can understand that. So I don't think we'll ever get locked down again in this instance. You can never say never, but I, I, I can't imagine the day that Jacinda Ardern will do this again. Um, so there's a bit of fear there, but they want to be left alone. They want to be allowed to, to run their business and to thrive without um, the tentacles of government coming in. So it's not much to ask, but sometimes it actually is a lot to ask when it's a pandemic. So mm. I think the, 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 their faith and their trust in systems and processes in government is a bit shaken. Duncan, uh, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.